A little while back I created a video on a checkpoint firewall and in today's video I'm going to continue that little series and I'm going to show you how to create a remote user VPN setup. Now within the checkpoint interface this is really easy and simple to do and I'm going to show you how to do it and there's a few different options in terms of how to get your users to connect. So let's start by going ahead and logging into the console. Just to show you what version we're running, it's just up here. So we're running R80.20.35 and it's the Quantum Spark Appliance 1590 if you're interested. Now, as I mentioned, it's really easy and simple to set up the VPN. Um, there's a little tab on the left hand side which says VPN and then you're left with three sections, which is remote access, site to site and certificates. So the bit that I'm going to be covering today is remote access. I do have another video soon coming on the site to site so if you're interested in that remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get notified when I release that video. So back to the VPN, uh, for the remote access you have the blade control itself so there's a straightforward on and off switch um, to turn on, turn on and off the VPN. So we click on and then we click apply. That's now enabled the remote access VPN and just like that it's, it's really that simple. As you can see with the remote access just under there's no local users or groups that are defined for remote access or the permissions. So literally you can go ahead and click the button there or you can just go to remote access users on the left hand side. Adding a user is really simple. You type in the username so let's go test user1 password. Create your own password whatever you want. You can type in an email address, phone number, you can create it as a temporary user if you want and it can expire at a certain point. So if you have someone connecting for the day, an hour, two hours, you can go ahead and set that up. But for now, we'll leave that unticked. We go ahead and click apply, and there we go. Our user has been created. It's really that easy and simple to do. You have the other option of connecting Active Directory or a separate radius server if you wish to do so. Again, just by clicking on them and it takes you to what you need to do. Type in the IP address, and if you wanna add your Active Directory domain, you can do that just here as well. If so there's something you want to see in a tutorial, let me know and I'll see if I can put something together for this. After remote user access, you have connected remote users. So this will show you a list of users that are connected once they are. Authentication servers, again, you can add your domain, radius servers, none of this is configured here yet, but there'll be more configuration settings within here if you do. And finally, you have advanced. So this is where you can set the subnet values, uh, so what you want it to be. The certificate, if you want to manually choose a specific VPN certificate or just the one that was last installed. And you can automatically set it to route the internet traffic through the connected clients through this gateway. Own gateway, it's using the VPN for its gateway. And then you can set the DNS settings also as well. So fairly configurable, you have a quite a few options in terms of there's something you want to play around with. But for now, let's go back to Blade Control. There's a couple of things I wanted to cover on this. It's also recommended that you configure DDNS, which is dynamic DNS, which is if you've got a residential line like I do in terms of an internet, you're going to have a dynamic IP address, which is constantly changing. It does say if you have a static IP, you don't need to do anything more other than set your static IP on this gateway. Uh, but for dynamic DNS, uh, you can go ahead and there's a couple of options we can do. So we're going to go ahead and click this. And then what it allows you to do is you can tick the box just here and it gives you the option. So you can use noip.com or DynDNS. So I'm using noip.com. So you type in then the username and password of the device and then you type in the host name. So once you have the host name, you can make sure it's pingable and routable from the internet and then that will constantly be updating if your IP address changes dynamically. So we go ahead and click apply and there we go, that's now set up. And then we go ahead and go back to VPN and you can see now the dynamic DNS name is set up. You then have a couple more options down here, so allow traffic for remote access users, uh, log the traffic, and then the last one is requires users to confirm their identity using two-factor authentication. Now, there's a little bit more involved in this one and probably a little bit out of scope for this video, so I'm not gonna go too much further into this, but just know that that option is there, and again, if you wanna see it, let me know down in the comments below, and you can get that configured and set up for your VPN users. Then we go on to have a look at how the users will connect. Now, as I mentioned at the start, there's a few different ways that the users can connect to the VPN. Uh, there's the Checkpoint VPN client, so you can download a piece of software on your local machine, and it's a Checkpoint client, and you can go ahead and connect and disconnect from the VPN, which we will have a look at shortly. You have the mobile client, so there's a Checkpoint client. 
which is the Checkpoint Capsule software. You can download that for iOS or Android, however you want to use it or whichever phone you have. You have the SSL VPN, which you can basically connect via the web. So you can just type in the IP address in the web browser, pops up with a little bit of software, and you go ahead and connect via VPN that way. Last but not least is the Windows VPN client. Now it says Windows, you can actually do this on the Mac, so I've tested this and it works on there as well, but it's just using L2TP with a pre-shared key. What you need to make sure you do though when you are setting this one up is you just need to type in a pre-shared key. Um, I'd make it a little bit more stronger than that, that's just for demo purposes uh, for this video. And then we go ahead and we click apply. And there we go, so now your remote user VPN is set up, you have your user set up, you have your dynamic DNS set up, and you have everything set up. So let's go ahead now and test the different options and see how they work out. So let's start with the Checkpoint VPN client. So I've already gone ahead and installed that. Now I'm gonna to have to apologize because this bit might be a little bit small, but if I go ahead in the top, you can see these here. Uh, if I click show client, I will try and zoom in on this uh, in the editing software if this hasn't worked. Uh, you can see the VPN, uh, we are not. We don't have a site, we're not connected. So we can go to VPN options. Uh, we have a new site. So we go through the site wizard, we click next. What's the server name and address? So this is what I've just created. So the dynamic DNS. Then you have uh, this little thing that pops up. Um, we click trust and continue. And it's going to ask you what VPN client, you're going to use the default one, we're going to use a username and password, and then we click finish. Then it's asking would you like to connect, so just before I do connect, I'm actually going to go ahead and change my connection um, to use uh, my mobile phone, so I'm not on my home network, and then we can go ahead and try and connect. I've now switched over to my iPhone in terms of connection, so I now just have a regular internet connection. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click connect, and then it's going to ask me for a username and password. So this is the one I created earlier, which is test user. And then the password, we go ahead and click connect. So the reason that popped up is because I reconnected to the VPN and my session had expired. So I should be able to log into this now. Yeah, so it's saying I'm already logged in. So I'm going to continue anyway, because I want to try and log in. And there we go, I am logged back in now and that's working as it should be. So that's the checkpoint software client. So it's really easy and simple to use. Um, for that. The next thing was the SSL VPN. Now this part is you can create the VPN. Again, um, I apologize if this is a bit small on the screen, but we go ahead and we click the plus and we are going to connect a VPN and it's actually going to be one with the pre-shared key. So this is the one that I told you about creating the pre-shared key and then we're going to call this checkpoint test. Go ahead and click create. We type in the address, which is again the address we created about the dynamic DNS, so you can just type, type that in. And then we go ahead and click apply. Then we go to authentication settings, we type in the password, along with the, along with the pre-shared key that we spoke about as well. And then we can just go ahead and click connect, and we'll go ahead and apply. And there we go, just like that, that's connected to the VPN setup, and again the username and password in the refresh. And again, in the background, you can see the browser has refreshed itself and timed out, and I would need to log back in again because I'm coming in via a different connection. So that's the two different ways. So you have just the L2 TP VPN that you can set up. You have the checkpoint software. Uh, I'm going to quickly show you the mobile app. And then the last one is the SSL VPN. So the SSL VPN, I'm not going to connect via that one, but I'm just going to show you how that works. So you type in HTTPS and you type in the IP address. Um, however, I have again the dynamic DNS set up so I can go ahead and use that. We go ahead and just show details and just continue to this website for now. And then this is what happens. So we have the pop-up that's blocked. Just make that a little bit bigger so you can see. And actually in the background you can see this has actually popped up. So it's asking for a username and password. So you would log in via this and then you can go ahead and connect via VPN that way. And the last one I'm going to show you is the Capsule app. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded it. So I go ahead and load the app. Now there's a QR code you can scan or do a manual connections. I'm just going to go ahead and click your connection. You type in the IP address or the dynamic DNS name or the host name, whatever you've created. And then you can type in a name, home VPN. So then you go ahead and click create. It's going to ask you to allow it. It's going to go and try and create the VPN. And there we go. It's saying, do you want to trust this server? Yes, I do. And then that's the VPN client. We want to go via the username and password and then we click on it. So now it's gonna ask you for a username and password. 
So again, the test user we created and the password. Go ahead and click connect. And there we go, we're now connected via the app. So again, just for our username and password, we're connected there as well. So overall, you can see the VPN configuration is fairly simple and easy to use. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. And if there's anything else you wanna see on the Checkpoint software or the firewall software, again, let me know down in comments below. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.